Good morning, Year 9, and welcome to another of our assemblies. Happy Wednesday. Um, theme of the week this week is courage. And as we always do, we're going to start off with a definition of what um, the theme of the week means. So courage is defined as being the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear. Ultimately, it's linked very closely to bravery and a few other words. I've put some synonyms down here. Fearlessness, dauntlessness, spirit. And I really like to highlight that word because in the definition, I really like the idea that it's very much about a quality of your mind, which means that we have the power to control our courage. So in our assembly today, we're going to be attempting to answer this question, what is courage? Now, I've put a picture up on this screen here of somebody doing a bungee jump. Now, this is something I personally have not ever done, but I have done things that push me to my limits of fear and my comfort zone. And it's courage that has helped me do that. Courage is something that we use to overcome our fears. It's the bravery. It's that sense when everything in your mind is telling you that not to do something and your courage is saying, no, do you know what? Yes, you can. You can do this. So courage helps us to achieve our goals. Now, we might not face something quite as frightening and as adrenaline fueled as a bungee jump, as you can see in this picture, every single day. Our fears or our goals every day might seem very small in comparison to this, but nonetheless, it is our courage that help us to overcome our fears and achieve our goals. I'm hoping that you recognise these four people. These four people make up our houses in Year 9 at Chertsey High School. Now, as you will know, each house at Chertsey High School is named after a leader in their field who showed that with knowledge, determination, love and courage that we can make a massive, massive difference um, to the world around us. We've got Isaac Newton. He changed the way that we understand the universe. He discovered laws of gravity and motion. He invented calculus. He basically helped us to shape our view of the world. You've got Wilberforce here. He committed his life to the pursuit of ending the British slave trade. Um, he had the courage not to let current circumstances dictate the future. He had the courage to take decisive and intentional action and he had the courage to persevere in the midst of adversity. You've got Tolkien who, whose stories, whose amazing journeys that he writes tell us that courage is often found in unlikely places and I think that tells us quite a great deal about um, about him. He created a language, he created a world that transports anybody who reads it or now watches those films into a whole new a whole new dimension and there's some amazing moral courage and moral guidance in in his stories and nightingale she lived courageously comforting wounded soldiers fighting for their rights and she basically turned the medical world upside down um they are just four people that with courage changed the way that the world has been viewed and how people take on the world and challenges that are faced to them. But on the next slide are two people that I think also do this in the world and I wonder whether you recognise them. Okay, so this woman is Mary Seacole. Now, she was born in Jamaica almost, well, more than 200 years ago. And this was during the period when many black people in the Caribbean were forced to work as slaves. And although Mary's mother was black, her father, James Grant, was a white Scottish army officer. And Mary was born a free person. 
Now, when the Crimean War broke out in the 18, in 1853, Mary travelled to England and approached the British War Office and asked to be sent as an army nurse to Crimea, um, where she'd heard that the medical facilities were awful and, you know, the, for, the situation for the wounded soldiers was terrible. And the British War Office refused her this opportunity. Now, she'd travelled a very long way and she'd been told no, had been turned away at the door. And rather than being daunted by this prospect and travelling back home, she actually funded her own trip to Crimea, now it, that's part of the Ukraine, and she established something called the British Hotel. Now, the hotel provided a place of respite for the sick and recovering soldiers. Now, at the time, Mary Seacole was as well known in Britain as Florence Nightingale, and I wonder how many of you recognised her picture on the previous slide. Now, Nightingale's very famous military hospital, and I'm not taking anything away from her because she was amazing, as we've just talked about, but her famous military hospital was situated hundreds of miles from the front line. But Mary Seacole, her hotel was much closer to the fighting and she actually visited the battlefield, sometimes came under fire to nurse the wounded. And she was so well thought of and she was such an amazing nurse and she was so kind and gentle that she was actually known as Mother Seacole. Now she died in London in 1881 and Unfortunately, she was pretty much lost, pretty much lost to history for around a hundred years until nurses from the Caribbean actually visited her grave in northwest London, where then the local MP um, now well then uh, promised to raise money for a statue for Mary. And in 2004, she was granted um not granted, she was voted the greatest Black Britain of all time. And the now MP, Lord Soley, launched the campaign for a statue um, after leaving the House of Commons. And in 2016, the statue was finally unveiled in the grounds of St Thomas's Hospital on London South Bank. So a really amazing story about courage and bravery and really fighting against the odds Again, using all of those key values that we talk about at Chertsey High, knowledge, determination and love. And thankfully, although hundreds of years after her amazing efforts in 2016, um, she has been finally recognised as that statue now in um, the gardens at St Thomas's. So this man here, you may recognise, this is Sir Edmund Hillary, and he was the first person to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world, and that was in 1953. Now, he uh, was born in 1919, grew up in New Zealand, and became very interested in mountain climbing. So he had climbed mountains in New Zealand, in the Alps, in the Himalayas, and he then faced uh, the highest mountain, which now Mount Everest lies between Tibet and Nepal. And between 1920 and 1952, there had been seven expeditions that had failed to reach the summit. And um, finally, in 1953, at 1130 in the morning of May 29th, um, Edmund Hillary and his um, guide reached the summit. 29,028 feet above sea level and it is considered to be the highest spot on earth. Amazing. And by coincidence, the um, sort of getting to the top of Everest was announced at the same time as um, the British public eye was on the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. So the second. So the triumph of a British-led expedition combined with a brand new young queen, um, both of those things happening very quickly next to each other, 
sort of rest restored the confidence of um of a nation and it was a huge huge triumph for um for britain but on the next slide um thinking about the story of nightingale and sea coal and then researching a bit about um edmund hillary i also then thought i bet you there is somebody who is not as well known as Edmund Hillary, that has not been knighted for their achievements, but does something equally as amazing. So on the next slide um, is a man, and I wonder whether you have heard of him. So one thing to come out of lockdown is how many different TV programmes I've watched and documentaries I've watched um, and this is one of them. And I have to publicly apologise to my husband at this point, because this is one of those programmes that he would put on and I would immediately huff. And actually, it was a fantastic, um, a fantastic documentary about a really quite amazing man. Now, this is Jesse Dufton. And Jesse Dufton... Um, I don't want to ruin it for you completely, but Jesse Dufton um, attempts to be the first blind person to lead a climb of um, something called the Old Man of Hoy. And that, for all the geographers out there, is a sea stack with a sheer cliff face basically rising out of the sea in Orkney in Scotland. Now, Jesse was born with 20% central vision. And at four years of age, he was diagnosed with a rare genetic disease that breaks down the cells within his retina. So by the time he was 20, he could no longer read. By the time he was 30, he could only just about detect light um, with around a one or two percent uh, field of view. Now, he had been a climber for his whole life and what Jesse achieved in the end, um, basically just defies what is humanly possible. And he faced so much adversity um, and just uses his courage and sets such an example of, of what is humanly possible. Um, so this documentary I've put a little video on here which is basically the trailer for the documentary but it's absolutely amazing please if you do get an opportunity it's on BBC I would really advise you watch it because it is just such an amazing example of what courage can do and what one man's courage and perseverance can do um it really is one of those documentaries that'll make you laugh make you cry um but it's just such an inspiring story of human endeavour and attitude. Now, what type of English teacher would I be if I did not, in the process of writing this assembly, think about a novel that teaches us about courage? Now, this um, is probably one of my most famous novels of all time, To Kill a Mockingbird, written by Harper Lee. And I know some of you have read this already because I've talked to you about it before, but I would genuinely advise you, um, any of you, to, to pick this up or at least watch the film over the summer because it is just such an amazing story. Um, and in the novel, the writer, Harper Lee, tries to... Um, show us that courage comes in very in many different forms um, and this story just to give you a bit of an idea about it before I go into detail um, it was written in 1960 but it's set in the mid-1930s in a small town called Maycomb, Alabama and it's narrated by a little girl called Scout Finch she's six year old and she's a proper tomboy and lives with her father Atticus who is a lawyer and her 10-year-old brother, Jem. Now, during the novel, Scout, Jem, and their friend, Dill, they try to, well, they make friends with, and they try to um, help a neighbour called Boo Radley, and he doesn't leave his house, and he's not been seen in the town since he was a teenager. And as the story develops and as an adult or an older person reading the story and because it's set through the eyes of and written through the eyes of a six-year-old, 
you realise as an adult that the reason that Boo Radley hasn't come out of his house is because he's frightened. And because of um, the issues at the time in the, in the town uh, in the 1930s where it's set of prejudice and racism, he he's frightened to leave his house. And the innocent eyes and the courageous eyes of Scout... Um, she doesn't see any of that. She just sees someone that she wants to help. And so she somewhat goes against the views of many people in her village and her town and, and seek to help him and make friends with him. But the main story of courage is um, with Atticus and he is a lawyer. And during the novel, he's asked to defend um, Tom Robinson, who is a black man who is wrongly accused of attacking a white woman. Now, Atticus takes on the case, even though everyone um, he knows has little hope of winning. They, they don't think they'll win. Now, the reader sees the trial develop through, as we mentioned before, Scout, childlike eyes of Scout. And gradually, both she and her brother learn some amazing life lessons from their father about courage and about tolerance and empathy and understanding. And the two main lessons in terms of courage that we learn is that courage can mean doing something even when you know you will never win. Atticus doesn't think he'll win the case, but he defends Tom because it's the right thing to do. And he wants to teach his children that sometimes, even if you're not going to win, you must do the right thing. That's what courage is, that guiding him to do the right thing. And the other lesson that we learn in this story is that sometimes the people who you least expect, such as the elderly or the most peace-loving people, can be the most courageous in society. Now, I've not spoken to you about this particular character, but there's a character called Mrs. Dubose in this story who is quite an eccentric old lady, but she, um, Atticus teaches us and teaches Scout to not be frightened of her and to actually see her in a slightly different light. And he makes us realise that actually she is a very courageous lady despite being quite grumpy and quite, um, quite frightening throughout a bit of the story but yeah so that is I couldn't not talk about Kill a Mockingbird in a an assembly all about um courage so I've spoken quite a bit in today's assembly about some heroes of literature some heroes of history who have shown amazing courage but what I want us to finish on in today's assembly is the idea that it's not just heroes who have courage and I want you to think about a time when you have felt a bit scared or worried about doing something. Now, you may not have succeeded. You may still be worried about doing that thing again, or you may be still scared about it. It might still frighten you. But whatever made you try to do something that scared you or worried you, Whatever made you try anyway is what gave you the courage. And actually, this is something that somebody told me a few years ago when I was feeling worried and scared about things. It was whatever's making you try, even though you're scared, even though you're worried, that is the same, that is giving you the courage. So those feelings of worry and, and frightened and being frightened about something actually feed into our courage and that's what drives our courage on. And equally, not all acts of courage need to be known worldwide to be defined as being brave. You can show courage every single day and I've just thought about how you can show courage in your everyday lives, both in school and out of school. And I've just written them um, on this slide and I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes just to finish off our assembly today to reflect on each of these points. And you'll notice that I've highlighted um, some key words 
that summarise each point. Um, speak out, persevere, ask, have a go, try and don't be afraid. Now, I'm going to leave you on that note today and I'd like you to read through those points and think about how you might use any of them moving forward just to show courage day to day. And I've also left you a quotation um, spoken by Nelson Mandela that I think also is a fantastic message about courage. Now, during this week, you have got two tutor sessions. Your tutor session today, Wednesday, um, hopefully if you have um, already had the session when listening to this assembly, you will know that you were talking quite a bit about courage. Um, and if you haven't um, had the tutor session just let yet and you're listening to the assembly beforehand, um, well done for getting up so early. And yeah, you can take some of these ideas into that tutor session. But either way, um, you'll also have a tutor session on Friday and we will be discussing some of these ideas too. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>